In Jump, there are several ways to calculate a z-score. The first way will be in much the same way that we found the average, that is, by using a column formula. Let me make a new column, I'll double click, and in this case, I'll name this column Quiz1 z-score. To define the formula, remember we can right click the column and go to the formula section. If we scroll down in the function section to statistical, we can select the column standardize function. Column standardize is asking us for one argument. That is, it's looking for a column that we would like the standardized values of. Since we're making a quiz 1 z-score, what I'm going to do is select quiz 1, and this will populate the formula with the quiz 1 column. When I click OK, Jump will compute for us the z-score for every individual in this dataset. We can do the same thing for quiz 2, just by replacing the quiz 1 column with the quiz 2 column. Let me show you another way to find the z-score. If we go back to the distribution platform, in this case I'll take quiz 2 and put it into the y columns, we can under the red triangle go to the save function group, the save section, and save a standardized value. If we do this, notice jump will save to the data set a column that actually has the z-score or the standardized value for all the individuals on quiz 2. Now I want to make a note about the differences between these two operations. In the first section, we actually made a formula. And by using a formula, this means any new data we put into the data set will cause this formula to be recalculated. This is useful sometimes, but there are other times where you would like your standardizations to be fixed. Let me hit cancel. If we look at the standardization for quiz 2, I'll even right click and go to formula, notice that there's no formula here. What Jump has done instead is actually calculated the z-scores and entered in the actual values. So, there are times where you're going to want to have this more dynamic standardization, one that will change if you enter in new values, and other times you might just want to save the standardized values themselves. Now that we have the z-scores for quiz 1 and quiz 2, let's go back to the distribution platform and look at these two columns. Here, I'll take quiz 1 z-score and the standardized quiz 2, and click them into the Y role, and I'll also check histograms only so that we suppress the statistical output. Let me click OK, and let's look at these two different distributions. There's one additional thing I want to do, which is go to the red triangle and select uniform scaling, which will ensure that our scales go from the same values, positive 2 all the way down to negative 3. Let me close the previous distribution output and move some windows around so that now we can click through the different individuals. If I click on Mary, let's look at her location in Quiz 1. Remember, Quiz 1 is going to be our standardized z-score of Quiz 1, and again we'll notice that Mary and John are both right near the center. If we look at the standardized Quiz 2 and click on Mary and John, you'll see again we see that Mary is at the top and John is at the bottom. That is, Mary and John are still in the same locations in the distributions regardless of the units we use, we did nothing to change the shape of these distributions. All we did was change the axis. That is, we put them on the same scale. Finally, now that these individuals are in the same scale, let's operate on them in the same way we did before, by taking the average. But this time, let's take an average of quiz 1 z-scored and quiz 2 z-scored. Remember how to do this? Let's make a new column. I'll double click and call this the average z-score. Then I'll right click on this column, select formula, and this time let's go directly to our statistical function group and select the mean function. Remember, the mean function can take as many arguments as we want and pressing the comma key gives us additional fields. I'll select the first field and select the quiz 1 z-score. Then I'll select the second field and select the quiz 2 z-score. In case you're interested, you can always double click on a formula to see the underlying scripting that Jump is actually performing. You don't have to use this scripting, but if you would rather write in the script form than using the graphical user interface, you're certainly welcome to. When I click OK, Jump will compute the average z-score now for all the individuals in this data set. Now let's look at Mary and John. Mary had an average z-score of around zero. That is, her distances to the center in standardized units averaged out to be about zero. She was about as far above on one of the quizzes as she was below on the other. However, if we look at John's score, 
John's average distance was quite far below average. That is, even though he was just a little bit below average on quiz one, he was so far below average on quiz two that his average distance to the center in standardized units was quite considerable. Now, the big insight from what we've done here is that our z-scores, our standardized scores, were able to encapsulate information about the mean and the standard deviation of these two quizzes. And because the mean and standard deviation of these two quizzes differed, our z-score is going to be a better measure of performance than simply the raw scores. If these quizzes were on the exact same distribution, that is, they had the same mean and standard deviation, then we wouldn't get such a large departure between the average of the raw scores and the average of the z-scores. The reason why these two measures differ, the average z-score and the raw averages, is because the raw averages know nothing about these distributions. A raw average is just the arithmetic mean of the individual raw scores, whereas an average z-score is first encapsulating information about the locations in the distributions, that is, how far above or below the mean a score is, and then it's scaling that relative to what a distance of one means in the distribution. That is, we're dividing by the standard deviation, so a distance of one in a z-score unit has the exact same meaning, one standard distance from the center. So our average z-score provides us a better picture of how these students were performing. And z-scores we'll see will be vastly useful for us when we start talking about specific distances in distributions.